Auggies Worldwide, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and I'm here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk about something a little bit different, an organization called Parks on the Air, or POTOM. This is an activity, it was uh, done by the League one year, and it just kind of caught on and is continuing, is where people take their equipment, go to a national park or a state park or a national monument or something like that and set up a portable station. And then th those are the people who go to the national parks. Then there are the hunters, those who are in their home stations trying to contact as many national parks as possible. Each park or entity is given a code number so you can look it up on a list and this has expanded to include more than the United States but the entire world is starting to get involved in this parks on the air thing. It's quite interesting because when people go to a park or entity a park can be as small as uh, say uh, Lincoln's birthplace, you know, would be run by the National Park Service and you have to set up on the property so that might mean sitting on the back porch with a mag loop but the idea is a portable operation in the National Park and then these are scheduled and you can look on the schedule to see who is activating what. All of the activators have to have written permission from the person in charge of the park, like the park ranger or so on. Some park rangers are a little more willing than others to allow people to do that. So you can either do this as an activator or as a hunter. Now the website that talks about this is called parksontheair.com. That's parks, P-A-R-K-S-O-N, T-H-E-A-I-R dot com. And if you go to that website, you'll learn all about this. I would suggest that you get started in this as a, quote, hunter, trying to contact these stations. And uh, on the other hand, at some point, you will be ready to gather some portable equipment, CW or phone. Phone is by far the most popular phone, meaning single sideband. Uh, is by far the most popular, but CW is also popular, and there is some uh, digital. Let's take a look at the website. Parksontheair.com. This is their home page. We've got a map of entities, lots of help, uh, things to do, uh, whether you are an activator or a hunter. Um, something to log into to keep track of what's going on, the various awards that you can get for doing this. The POTA scheduler is a way that you may schedule an activation, also that hunters may look to see what is scheduling. Spots are like a DX spot. These are people who real-time are noting that certain parks on the air are on and where they can hear them. Of course, they've got a shop and, and so on. Now, um, Parks on the Air is the site for the international portable operations that promote emergency awareness and communications from the national, federal, and state provincial level uh, parks. Now, uh, one of the things that's important uh, to note here is the COVID information. Be sure to... Um, make sure that you keep track of uh, what all of the restrictions are and obey them. You will probably want to find an area of the park that is, um, you know, away from other people. Uh, normally we would try to do this in a visitor center or something like that, but you can be exposed to a lot of people, a lot of whom don't wear masks. Um, but uh, during the COVID crisis, it's probably best to be located uh, in a less used part of the park. Uh, this are a bunch of people like, for example, program administrators and so on, people that you can contact 
You can get their information on qrz.com. Okay, and uh, here is the uh, uh, information about who's running it. Um, it is a 501c3 organization, so you can donate to it and uh, uh, subtract that or a, uh, take a deduction for that on your taxes, depending on whether or not you're itemizing. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these. Here's maps of entities, a POTA map. Um, we'll pick a, a location here. Um, let's see, United States of America. Let's pick uh, Colorado. Okay, here's, here's Colorado, and it shows all the different uh, places that are uh, possible. This is Ridgeway State Park which is extremely close to where I live, basically across the street. Um, here is the Uncompahgre National Forest. They've got just one dot, but it's this entire area. Okay, up here is a little uh, state park uh, involved with a lake. You've got uh, lots of other things that you can do up here. Grand Mesa National Forest. There are just all kinds of places. Here is Moab. There are many, many, many different places in Utah that are designated as, as parks and so on. So they, they are everywhere. They are everywhere. And each one of these has a uh, designation that you can uh, look up and, uh, uh, and see. Here's Spinney Mountain State Park. It's Entity K1240. Okay. And now... Let's go back to the um, page here. There's help getting started, how to register the rules, uh, guide for activators. Remember, the activators are the ones that go to the park. And there's video guides for the hunters, or the people who stay home and try to contact the people. Now, this dashboard right here uh, shows the top activators, uh, top the current year all time, uh, some spotlights that they've got on people, a wanted park, um, welcome to POTA, uh, park to park contacts, um, scheduled activations. Okay, here's one for today, and uh, this gives um, the uh, entity and any comments. And then here, for example, is one we'll start on 20 meters. CW and then go to 20 SSB and then 30 CW and then 40 CW and 40 SSB. Please spot me. That means uh, put it on the spot. Uh, if you look here are active POTA spots. Okay, now the scheduled activations are made by the activator. The active POTA spots are parks on the air that listeners have heard Okay, and you get the time in UTC. It's 1909 right now. Okay, and uh, this tells you the reference park number and the frequency, da 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 da. Okay, that you can go to, and you may be able to hear them on that frequency right now. Okay, so we've got all kinds of information that is available. You kind of get the idea that it's a quasi. Um, partner sort of thing uh, because somebody is going to activate the park they put that up on the schedule here if you're a chaser you are at home looking for people who have scheduled and if you hear somebody you put it up on the active poda spots so other people near you uh, can get that so um, going back here to parks on the area uh, this is the schedule right here uh, if you want to schedule something right here, uh, shows you what is being scheduled. Schedule a POTA activation. You need to log in and so on. We haven't done that. Um, there's also the POTA spots that uh, tell you what's being heard and when and so on. Um, and let's see over here. Uh, they've got, of course, a shopping so that you can... Uh, you know, a flag, wow, 
that you can use to uh, uh, exercise it in a way to contact them for uh, uh, details if you want. Now, um, as you can see, the activity is popular. Um, lots of things are going on at any given time. These are 0215 and 0216 scheduled activations. There always seems to be something going on and uh, lots of awards you can get. It is a popular activity. So if you're learning, looking for a way to get on the air, usually you would start as a hunter and look at the spot, see who can be heard and who can be heard where, and uh, try and find these people um, where they are. Because see, this just says 402010, okay? N1XRR, I don't see him spotted here, but um, you can find, it's something to hunt for, okay? It's not a contest per se, it's contest-ish, but there's no exchange uh, that you have to have. You can just talk to each other for a while. Say, oh yeah, I was in Yosemite Park when I was a child, something like that. Okay, okay, so that's Parks on the Air. It started out as NPOTA, National Parks on the Air, but has grown into this where they include the state parks as well as the national parks. And basically, and anything in the United States that is run by the National Park Service uh, counts as a national park. So it doesn't have to be Yosemite or Yellowstone. It can be something as simple as uh, uh, Lincoln's birthplace or something like that. Sometimes these little entities are extremely small. There was a story in QST a couple years back about uh, somebody who was um, activating a uh, uh, parks on the air that was a house. It was a na you know a national restored house, and you could go in and visit it. He had to sit on the back porch with a mag loop because the activation has to be entirely in the park. If he had any bigger antenna, it would have gone into the neighbor's yard. So he used a mag loop and had great success doing it. This is just another operating event that you can do to have some fun with and uh, it's on uh, lots of different HF frequencies if you're general or extra this is just a a really fun thing to do in some cases some may activate with VHF or UHF which would give technicians a chance to uh, uh, jump into that too it's a fun little thing to do so if you would like to support this channel financially, please go to dcastler.com support. And until we next meet, 73.